Assassin's Creed Origins has been officially announced. And I'm guessing you want more details? Me too. So I went to Ubisoft Montreal to get them. The Origins team is made up of key members of the crew that brought Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag to life. And when they set out to make this grand adventure, they knew they needed a setting to match their ambitions. You know what we say history is our playground. Ancient Egypt is a, you know, it's a romantic setting, it's a mystical setting. There's a lot of diversity in the landscape of Egypt and that's why it's fascinating and that's why it was also amazing and uh, super inspiring for the team to recreate. Obviously the first thing that comes to mind is pyramids. We we're gonna have that into the game and that's, it's a no-brainer but ancient Egypt is much more than, than ancient pyramids. So history is like a, is like a, a puzzle, right? My job and the way the, work, the team works is really to find out all these small details with this information. So what are the flowers, the trees that were back in Egypt? What were the animals? We tried to respect both the culture, the Egyptian culture, and to putting them into the game, uh, and also having something that's, that's interesting. How I actually saw ancient Egypt, first of all, in my imagination. I mean, you, you only see like, you know, sands and sort of, you know, pyramids, and it's really kind of dry. But actually, you know, during that time, it was lush and, you know, it was full of life. We have now the capacity from a technological standpoint to be able to create a, a massive countryside. You know, it's not a, it's not a city, it's, it's a whole country with many cities, many villages, many exotic uh, landscapes. This is why we decided to remove the minima, which is we want you to enjoy and to actually experience the beautiful world we're bringing to you. You will have to play the game to put some icons in the game, you know. Also the fact that we have a time of day that is systemic, we made sure that every single moment in the time of day is almost like a painting, you know. That's not something that is done, like, it's not automatic, it's really crafted. The world is, I think, has never been so alive and so lush and so interesting. And I hope players will, will have a lot of hours of fun uh, into Egypt with us. We started by saying we're in Egypt, which meant large landscapes, which meant vehicles like animals, like uh, chariots, camels. All of this, we felt we needed to make sure that all of this worked within the combat system. So naturally, we start talking about range combat, using the bow, using uh, throwable weapons. We allow the fight to be way more responsive, way more dynamic, so that the player can really play the way they want. In previous ACs, when you attack, the hero and the enemy came together, no matter the distance, effectively. This is gone now. Now, all of a sudden, your spacing in the fight, how many enemies you're fighting, where are they, matters. If you swing in open air, you can. And you could screw yourself over by doing that. In melee combat, we have a lot of different types of weapons. We've got maces, swords, axes, uh, shields. You know, the reach of your weapon matters. The stats of your weapon matter. So you have to really judge your position in the fight, mixed in with the length of your weapon, the speed of your weapon, the positions of the enemies. And in range combat, we have different types of bows. So we have, uh, the most famous one is probably the Predator bow, which is a, the equivalent of a sniping rifle. We got a bow that has a super high rate of fire. And we have a, a bow that is the equivalent of a shotgun that shoots five arrows at the same time. We have many types of enemies with their own weapon loadout. Their weapon loadout dictates the way they fight. So players will have to learn how does the enemy with the spear and the shield work versus uh, the guy with the huge mace. And reading their behavior in the fight, then asking themselves, what am I comfortable using against these types of enemies in this situation? So it's a, it's a much different system than we've had in the past, but it's afforded us uh, really brand new experiences for players that I'm excited for people to try and play and, and give us feedback on it. Really, you, you cater your play style to what you like based on how you level up in the skill trees. And that's something we want to also visualize and show on the player. So it's not only something that we play in the stats, but it's also something you will see on the character. We give players many avenues within the crafting system, within the inventory system, uh, within the skills. So uh, a concrete output of this means that you cannot assassinate anybody in the game with one shot. If you dedicate yourself to crafting your hidden blade, to increasing the, the damage that it can do, you might be able to get there. But you have to dedicate yourself to it. Now going more action RPG, forced us to say, no, no, you have to deal with the challenges of the game, the levels of the enemies, and um, you can be that super stealthy assassin, but dedicate yourself to it. Now, because we have levels, we have uh, RPG mechanics, it's afforded us to be able to do epic bosses. So, in, in the main story of the game, 
but also in the, in the world where we know some players, if they're really comfortable with the challenge of the fight, they can go and push themselves to, to fight the most ultimate bosses. It's a very big world also, so to make sure that the player would be constantly engaged within that world, um, we created um, NPCs that have their own agenda. They have their own purpose in the world, so they, they work, they go back to their home to sleep, and you can help them with the quest system. So you meet them, you talk with them, and they say, I need some help with this. And as a player, you get to make a decision whether or not you want to engage with that specific type of, a, of NPC. So I think that's interesting, and that also gives flexibility to explore the world the way you want to and live the story the way you want to as a player. The player, of course, picks up these quests and chooses what they want to work on. Sometimes the quests will intermingle. Sometimes you're in the middle of one quest and you'll see a que another quest uh, person walking by and you can jump into that. And we wanted this very organic feel to the world. There's a lot of people to meet, a lot of characters, and they have a lot of stories to tell. It's not only an origin story, it's also witnessing key moments of the franchise and the reasons why decisions were made. Was it just someone decided, I'm going to put on a hood? No, no, there, there's stories behind all of this and these are the experiences that you explore in the game. Uh, so for sure, Eagle Vision is, is one more of those elements where, why is it called Eagle Vision and where did it really come from? Bayek has also uh, this connection, this very special connection with, uh, with the Eagle Senu that you can use, you know, to really scout and, and plan ahead, you know. So with your eagle, you'll be able to spot, you know, who's, uh, what the challenge is about, you know, seeing the level, the number of enemies. In this exact setting was also the perfect moment and the perfect, actually, world and culture and mythology to, to see, to witness the, the birth of the, of the brotherhood. I mean, it's, it's so much fun, man. It's so great. Like, it's so, so cool and it's an honor, you know. Uh, but telling an origin story, you get to put some pieces of the puzzles together and explain a little bit more to the player. Uh, so that's really cool.